creative writers uh, in, uh, in, the, in the Chicago area. What I'll do is, and, and when it's time for me to say, I'm going to come up to this for a microphone, and then can we have a uh, possible. So, since we're going to do this in uh, alphabetical order, and Tony's not here, so Tony Romano. You know, you're not in alphabetical order, you're just the next on the list. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Would you like to come and talk a little bit about your, your work? Sure. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is going to be very short because I, uh, I don't have any prepared comments. I, I know Fred really well. He said he was going to moderate. He said he was going to ask his question. But, but I do have a few things I can say. Uh, you know how you drive and you drive and you get to where you uh, need to and then you look back and you you uh, don't even know how you got there. You know that feeling? It, it's a, sort of a panic, too. I don't even remember turning. Uh, I kind of live my life that way. See, it's sort of in a hypnotic trance. And I think that's uh, that serves fiction writers really very well uh, because we need to, to live in this dream state. So to have me articulate things that I do while I'm dreaming is, is very difficult. It's like asking you to interpret your dream. Tell me why you had the dream you had last night. It's, uh, it's very difficult, and I, I, I kind of avoid it. And I actually avoided uh, saying yes to Dominic because, because of that. But uh, probably some formative experiences that I've had uh, as, a, as a kid growing up in a, in a Catholic family, in an Italian family. I grew up around Grand and Ashland. And uh, one of the most formative was uh, peeing in the confessional. And I, and I wrote about it, but I, I can take a few minutes to, to read a section of that. Uh, so you can have the visual. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You want you want the visual. So it was a very uh, shameful experience, and uh, and uh, I, I think when I look for topics to write about, I look for these uh, insurmountable conflicts that people have. And when you think about Italians and Catholics, that that doesn't get any more insurmountable. For example, uh, one of the characters in the book uh, breaks his leg. And his mother, his old country mother, believes it's a curse that he broke his leg. There must be some reason for this. And so to introduce this character against this more modern son, I think creates drama right in itself. And another character, uh, one of the family members dies, and again, that's a curse. And throughout the book, we discover how they damn themselves, and they, uh, their own downfall is created because of this, uh, this curse. Uh, another formative experience was uh, sitting in the back of the church, and I heard two ushers talking about, would we get paid for this? And one of the ushers makes a pantomime movement of taking money out of the basket and putting it into his pocket. And I was uh, maybe 10 years old, and, and I didn't know if they were kidding or serious, but it really stuck with me. And uh, again, that feeling of, uh, of shame that I, that I remember. Uh, another... Uh, formative thing happened, and we used to go to Mass every day, or every week in, in uh, Catholic school. So we went every Wednesday, and one, uh, one morning, the eighth grade boys, it was a very small class, we decided that we weren't going to go back to class. We were just going to stay there, and so the rest of the class filed out, all the girls and the teacher, and we hid underneath pews there. Uh, and then the, the teacher came back, and he looked out at the empty pews, because we were hiding. I know you were out there. <laughs> and... Uh, so the Catholic experience for me is one full of uh, you know, hiding and, and shame, and, and I didn't have a lot of good experiences in terms of uh, uh, role models. So my priest characters tend to be either these bumbling, hapless characters, or they're mavericks where they're fighting against this system, and uh, they, they rebel, and, and they try to find the, the humanity in it rather than the, the routine and the, the, the rope rules, etc. I think the, the new pope is kind of refreshing in this way, where he says, instead of focusing on what we've been uh, micromanaging, let's focus on poverty and let's focus on uh, helping people. Let me just read this as a short section. I think it'll give you a better idea rather than me rambling. Uh, this is a, 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 I'm just going to read like a page or two. This is a story about a, a young man who breaks his leg and he has to go back home and live with his mother. And he's a, a young man, he's 25 years old, to live with his mother who believes this, this uh, Broken leg is a curse. On day 10, Mama gave me a St. Christopher's medal and had Father Joe from St. Collins Hill in the old neighborhood pay me a visit. The same Father Joe whose confessional I peed in when I was eight or nine because I couldn't hold it. 
peed in my pants, actually, the warmth trickling down my legs, and though I was kneeling, into my socks. I strained to create a space between my skin and pants, but soon felt the blotting and the sticking and kept pulling the material away, the sharp yellow smell pushing through the muskiness of the dark boot. When Father Joe slid open his paneled window and all that separated us was the lattice work and the black scrim curtain, I wondered if I'd sinned and if I should report the deed. I didn't, of course, and after I'd been assigned my three Hail Marys and three Our Fathers for lying to my parents or other some such or, up, or some other such serviceable sin, I ran home without turning back. Sitting across from me now in Mama's living room, Father Joe had a broad, fleshy face and a pasty complexion of a corpse who had been made up with the chalky paint of a funeral parlor. Though I didn't believe him, he said he remembered me serving mass for him. Some memory, Father, I said. I really enjoyed those days. The bittersweet incense that burned into the layered coats of varnish on the mahogany pews, the smoke that rose in gray-white clouds from the incense kettle, the brass Eucharistic bells rung twice on cue, though I could no longer recall the telltale words, the chink of the wine glass against the chalice, small moments that kept my breath suspended. He crossed his legs, leaned back, and peered down at me. I remember everything, Jimmy. Even the rank puddles left in your confessional, I wanted to ask. Your mother is taking good care of you, I trust. After setting down sweets, espresso, and a bowl of fruit on the coffee table, Mama demurely slipped out to the backyard in case I wanted to confess and purge myself of the sin that had fractured my tibia. And then I'm going to skip a little section here and I'll finish up with this. I turned and looked at Father's black shoes, dull but not a scuff on either of them. Father, I said. He stopped. I looked into his eyes, blue pools of assurance. Would you, would it be okay if I made confession, if I confessed? Without a word, he brought his chair closer to the couch, sat facing the living room picture window, and bowed his head. He crossed himself, a string of incantations spilling thread-like from his lips, and he was ready. I needed more dark. The afternoon sun poured through the window in glimmering shafts of gold, and even with my eyes, eyes, eyelids closed, splintered through. Bless me, Father, I said, and made the sign of the cross, for I have sinned. It has been many years since my last confession. I've been, but I couldn't do it. I had the words all right, but the old knee-jerk reflexes kicked in, and I heard myself spitting out the same third-grade sins the, son, the nuns had taught us to recite. The sisters had meant well to offer suggestions, but most of us simply memorized and juggled the list from week to week. Shame overtook me, not because I had lied and been mean to my parents, and not because I had impure thoughts, but because I didn't have the concrete adult sins to report. Because I couldn't tell them about the time I saw Mama in a restaurant with another man and have acted since then more like a stranger than a son to her. A cruel and deliberate decision that pierces her like a dagger and both pleases and kills me. Somewhere along the way, 